Hey guys, and welcome back to the Head Up Podcast. Today I'm joined with Josh as usual, and today we have a very special guest in Terry Campisi. How's it going, Terry? Hey guys, going good. Um, over here, it's a sunny day. It's been pretty bad weather at the moment here in, in Australia, especially um, down the south coast and in Canberra, whereabouts we are. It's uh, been a lot of rain, completely different to the last few years where obviously been a lot of drought and bushfires. So, um, yeah, not much sun, but today's today's been a, a nice sunny day to get some um, some vitamin E, which has been great. Beautiful day for a potty, yeah? Beautiful. Out the backyard, mate. As you can see, the bush at the background, nothing better. Let's, let's do it. Um, so what we like to do at the start of every podcast is I'm going to ask you six quick fire questions and you have to answer with what comes off the top of your head. <laughs> no pre-warning for this, is there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your favourite fast food? KFC. Who is the NRL GOAT? Josh Papali'i. Very early 2022 Premiership prediction. Canberra Raiders, for sure. Which club made the best signings for next year? Canterbury Bulldogs. Which team will jump up the ladder the most next year? Yeah, the Bulldogs, for sure. Which team will fall down the ladder the most? Oh, I say it every year, Melbourne Storm. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do. They just always seem to somehow stay up there. Exactly. They can't be up there for too much longer, surely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sweet. So we're just going to sort of go through your career, some highs and some low points of your career, and just ask you what your experiences were like. So we'll start off growing up. What made you play rugby league instead of rugby union? I heard that you're a bit of a rugby union head growing up, and what made you switch? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, predominantly all the way up until literally the final decision to to uh, play rugby league, I was union. Um, so if they fell on the same day or there was a tournament on the weekend, um, I'd always pick rugby um, over rugby league up until um, it was almost time to finish year 12. And I had a couple of um, offers and contracts on the table. And um, so, yeah, there was a, quite a few from Rugby Union, New South Wales, Brumbies, um, some of the Sydney clubs, and then uh, the Canberra Raiders as well. So I, I love both sports. I love watching the, the Canberra Raiders um, as a young fellow, Mount Meninga, Ricky Stewart, Laurie Daly. Um, and I don't know, just at the time, um, I was enjoying rugby league a lot more and um, they were trying to get me to, to come over to rugby league um, as a junior, but uh, my heart was with rugby union. Um, and then I decided, you know, late in 2001 to, to play rugby league. Um, and, and I played first grade. I was lucky enough to win a, a competition in the local comp. Sorry, that was 2002 and just thoroughly enjoyed it. So that was my, my decision. Um, and still to this day, I, day I'm a loyal man and um, yeah just bled green from there on in and wanted to be a Raider forever and I wanted to win a competition but um, unfortunately we weren't good enough but yeah there's definitely no regrets and um, yeah I've, I've loved every minute um, playing rugby league. Yeah. yeah so early on in your career you had um, bad luck with injuries how tough was that period early on and what motivated you to succeed and for the Raiders? Oh yeah so you know, actually, early on, I was, I was all right with injuries. It wasn't until I was 25, 26, where I had my first operation, which is, um, you know, quite quite far in your career for a rugby league player. But from then on, then on, I, um, you know, must have hit the the bad curse somewhere along the line where I, you know, if I sit here and rattle off my injuries, the podcast will go for about two hours. But, you know, um, off the top of my head, I've had three ACL recos, my groin off the bone, I've ripped my hammy off the bone, grade three pec tear. Just uh, didn't didn't end from, from when I was 25 until literally when I retired um, from professional rugby league, even in the World Cup uh, for Italy in 2017. I tore my calf two days before the first game, so I had to withdraw from that. And then, I uh, was lucky enough to play in the final game against Fiji, who were on fire. And um, so I had to strap my calf up to get out on the field. And literally two minutes into the game, I made a bit of a break and and twisted my ankle. So I was, I was battling a torn calf and an ankle in my last professional game. So just summed up my career. But at the end of the day, um, I just wanted to get back out there and prove and just show every young kid that 
um, you, you go through adversity um, and you can get out the other side. And um, I'm, I'm 37 now and, and still playing local local league. So you can still be done no matter what hurdles there are, hard work and dedication and, and just to follow your dream that, you know, anything's possible. So if it's someone battling from injury or battling through illness, through cancer or whatever it might be, is that um, if you've got strong support around you and your, your mates and your family are there and, and you, and you put your head down and do the hard work, then anything's possible. Very well said. Um, so as you said before, you're a one club man in the Canberra Raiders. How special is that, just being a one club man? Yes, um, few and far between these days, isn't it? So um, I don't know. I just wanted to be successful at the Raiders. There was, a, there was twice, I think, or yeah, a couple of times throughout that, that period where I was very close to leaving. Um, one being the Melbourne Storm and and one being Japanese Rugby Union. So they were the, the two times um, in that 10, 12 year period where I almost left. Um, but at the end of the day, my heart was at the Raiders. And um, that's one thing growing up as a, as a young kid, my uncle, uh, David Campisi, he was always one to, to tell me to follow my heart, not follow the money. He was, you know, he was one that pretty much bred that into me. And um, yeah, to, to this day, I'm, very similar trait to what what he had, and um, yeah, just had to follow what the heart wanted, and that was to be uh, a green a green man forever. And um, yeah, so I'm very proud of that. And to captain the club was probably you know up there for the biggest honour that uh, that any footballer can do is to lead a club that they love. And um, was very fortunate to do that for a couple of years, and I led alongside Alan Tung, and then led alongside current captain Jared Croker now. So. Um, yeah, definitely ticked a lot of boxes when I was there. 100%. So in tw- 2008, you had like a really good season. You won Dallium 5 8 of the year. How good did that feel considering your start of the se- start of your career was a bit of a struggle with injuries? Yeah, so the, the start, I was, you know, debuted when I was 19, 2004 against Penrith, who were the premiers the, uh, the previous year. So, you know, I played, I think, a handful of games straight away. Um, after my after I debuted, and then um, I can't remember at the time. I think it was Brad Drew come back from injury, and I was put back to reserve grade. And and from then on until 2008, I was literally up and down, in and out. Uh, could never hold my my position. Um, 2007, I thought I was unlucky. I went on a a bit of a run in 2007 when I got my opportunity, and I think I won three or four out of six men of the matches. And Michael Dobson at the time come back from injury, and he took my spot. So it was like, what do I need to do to, to cement my spot in first grade? And um, I couldn't be more consistent than that um, to win, you know, that many men and matches out of, of that many games. And um, I just worked hard again and, and went back and focused on the preseason in 2008 and got really fit. Um, and then again, I still wasn't, I never cemented my spot. And um, I started the year with Toddy and then, um, um, you know, seeing a good mate leave the club, it's always unfortunate. And, um, then I had to step up and then I was the main half, I guess. And, and from then on, I just clicked. I had, a, had an awesome year. And, you know, looking back at it now, it's, you know, it's once in a lifetime that you don't, you don't see that, that form from many players um, consistently that often. So it's um, definitely something that I remember for the rest of my life. And I was, um, yeah, just, just happy to be wearing that green jumper each and every week. And um, at that time, I knew that my spot was cemented. So that just gave me confidence to, to go on. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2008, you represented Australia. And then in 2009, you obviously played State of Origin. How was how were those games different to club footy? Was it tougher or? Um, to be honest, uh, oh, it's, it's completely different feeling. It's, um, you know, when you represent your country, you you're obviously representing everyone who's, you know, um, done all the hard work throughout your career, you're representing your family, you're representing everyone who's passionate in, in the in our country and all NRL supporters. So it's not just the Canberra Raiders supporters that you, you, you're um, going out to play for. You're, you're playing for everyone that follows the game. Um, and unfortunate, I only got to, to play 16 minutes in that whole whole series. But, you know, to be trained alongside Darren Lockyer, John Thurston, Greg Inglis, Israel Folau, Billy Slater... Um, Cameron Smith each and every day we were, we were away for six weeks was um, a huge learning experience and just to see how they went about their business um, they're, they're so professional and they do do things just at the next 
next level. So I was um, very fortunate to be a hold of that, to be a part of that, sorry. And um, yeah, it was unfortunate that I only got to play a short, short time. But, you know, I, I got to put that jumper on and um, yeah, very, very proud of it. Yeah. You also had the chance to play in the city country game. Do you think that should be back now or do you think that run it, had run its course? Uh, it needs to be a general trial. Um, you know, the, the reason why they got rid of it was because, um, you know, they, they'd pull all the good players out who were certain and play Origin, which was was unfair for, for a few. But um, I, I still enjoyed that as well. It was, um, you know, it was such a big game back in the day. Um, it meant so much. And there's so many people. Block of Roach, for example, was in camp with us. He was just so passionate about about um, putting on your country jumper and getting out there and giving it to the city boys who, I guess, um, you know, thought they were a little bit better than the, the country lads. So it, it means so much to the, to the older generation. And um, at the moment, it sits at our level. So there's, there's, there is country city still. Um, I was a part of the coaching staff last, or well, this year with Bo Scott, he was the coach. Um, so it's, it's still a great concept. And, you know, I know that the players at our level love it. And then um, it would be interesting to see it back in the NRL. And I think there is a... Um, there is a platform for it, but it needs to be a genuine New South Wales trial. Yeah, 100%. Um, what was your time in Super League like? I heard you played a couple of seasons over there. Was that a different learning experience completely transitioning to the UK game or what was that like? Oh, definitely. Um, going from a young kid that grew up in a small town of Queenman. Um, I lived here, what, for 32 years and literally moved out to the street next to where I grew up from my mum's house. So, um, never really um, left left home for too long. We don't get too much opportunities to travel um, when you're when you're in professional sports. So to move over there to see different countries um, and to experience a different culture was um, was definitely something I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, the first year we went there, I replaced Josh Hodgson. Hodgson, Hodgson come to us, and I went over there for Hull Kingston Rovers. And oh, I forget how many years it was. It was 30 odd years since the club had met, uh, had made Wembley. And I was lucky enough to be in a team that made Wembley the first year, which was 80,000 people um, in London to, to watch the game. So it was a, an unreal experience, but unfortunate. I did my ACL a couple of weeks before the big game. So I was just a, a part of the staff on the sidelines with headsets on. I didn't actually get to run out. So, um, but thoroughly enjoyed my time over there. Great bunch of lads, great club. And, um, yeah, just a, a great culture experience to, to experience the other, other side of the world. Absolutely. So, obviously, um, in this day and age in rugby league, they have the rules like the six again, the two-point field goal, the high tackle penalty. Um, back in your day, they obviously didn't have that. But are you a fan of how the game is evolving or do you think they should just go back to how it was? Oh, there's definitely um, room for, for rule changes, but not too many in the one season. I think this year they just went over the – over the top, introducing so many new rules and um, it just threw everyone out. Um, they need to introduce, you know, one rule at a time and give it a trial. If it doesn't work, then then go back to, to what it was. But I did like the six again rule, personally. Uh, it reminded me a bit of England where it's just attacking, attacking football. Um, but, yeah, towards the end of the season, it just got inconsistent with the rules. The refs were a bit inconsistent with the with the ruling of it. So each game was, was a little bit different. So... Um, yeah, I, I like the rule changes. I like the kicking rules, the 2040s or 4020s. Um, I like I like it. I wish they would bring in one where if you're kicking with inside the 20 metres zone and it goes dead, it's not seven tackles um, because we've lost a bit of that attacking kind of kicking on the line. I, I'd, I'd like to see the seven tackle rule outside the 20 just to stop um, teams kicking dead to, to take the fullback out of play. But, um, yeah, there's definitely the room for rule changes. But, yeah, just one at a time, not 10. <laughs> I'm kind of shocked that you're a fan of the six again after that Raiders grand final call. That was, a, that was an absolute shocker. <laughs> yeah, that's, another, that's a whole other story, isn't it? That's uh, unfortunate. That's a referee who who's never really liked the green machine. I don't think I've ever won a game with him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, going back to your um, time in England, a lot of people say, like for us fans, a lot of people say like the England game's a lot easier. Did you find that when you were over there or was it just completely different style? Yeah. No, oh, it's completely different. Um, it's probably not the quality in players, obviously, that the NRL has. Um, 
But yeah, every every single game's hard to myself. Um, going back to local league, um, coming back from England and playing with the Queanbeyan Blues, that was hard. You know, there's there's a big target on your back, and you've got 17 blokes wanting to take your head off. Um, we're in a, in a in a professional game of the NRL. You've got 17 quality players going at it, and um, you've got to be at your game for the for the whole 80 minutes. But England was more attacking. It probably wasn't as a big emphasis on defence, but um, obviously the weather comes into play over there as well. It's a it's a lot colder um, and, and muddier at times. But then in the summer over there, it's it's beautiful playing weather. So the teams win. You know, it's like almost like watching the old under twenties here in Australia, where it was forty two forty the, the score line. So um, and the crowd get you know right into it over there, singing and bantering along. Some. You go to a game of 8,000 people and it sounds like there's 30,000 people in the sand. So um, completely different all across the park. But um, yeah, anywhere they play, anywhere where they play rugby league is uh, is great to me. I've heard a lot of um, stories about funny moments on the rugby league field, like players farting in scrums and stuff. <laughs> what would you say the funniest moment you've seen on a field personally? Oh, there's, yeah, there's definitely... There's definitely a lot um, of funny things. There's a lot of guys with good banner. Um, I don't know, probably probably one that, that sticks out well, was probably more directed at me than uh, than anything else, but uh, we had a good laugh about it. It was um, at a scrum. That's when I was starting to lose my hair. Obviously, um, not much left on top, so I have to start shaving it now. But Willie Mason um, stopped the whole scrum and, you know, everything was really quiet. And he said, Campo... <laughs> Can you please take that cat off your head? So uh, I got the nickname Cats Hair from from there on out. So um, yeah, that's when I was starting to, to thin on top, and it was a bit, um, it was getting a bit, um, yeah, see through. So uh, the old Cats Hair stuck with me for a while until I started shaving it full time. So yeah, the boys had a good laugh about that. <laughs> yeah, um, we saw this year you did some boxing. You went in the ring. What, what was that like compared to being on the league field? Was that an experience you enjoyed or was it a lot harder than it looks? Oh, that's, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I loved the preparation of it. Um, and then I was injured. I got I played local league and, and hurt my knee leading up to it. So I had to take a couple of weeks off. So I only had about a three-week preparation for it. Um, I fought against Ben Alexander, the ex-Wallaby. Um, you know, played quite a few tests for the Wallabies and used to be a big lump of a lad. But we went in there pretty much the same height, same weight. Um, and, yeah, it was just a, it was an unreal experience. We raised a shitload of money for charity, which was the, the, the reason behind the fight. And um, getting in the ring, they, they, they say to you that um, all your training will go out the window. Uh, everything that you learn, you will not, you know, would not do one thing in the ring. And... That was a hundred percent the truth. I got in there and it was just like a uh, what we we have only fought for three two minute rounds and it was like a six minute pub fight. So I don't think I got one combo on that I trained for. Um, you can't hear the outside. That the, the whole place was packed. There wasn't a, a spare seat in the house and they were screaming and yelling. But it was just like it was just us two just going at it, um, fighting over a can of rum at the bar. So um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed the lead up and, and the training for it, but. The experience in the ring was um, was was completely different. Um, yeah, you're all alone in there. It's only one v one. There's no one to help you. You got no teammates to come and back you up. So um, I'll, I'll take my hat off to you know Floyd Mayweather, for example. He's never never lost. Yeah, I don't know how how he's done it because yeah, it's um, it's pretty pretty scary in there. But um, yeah, it was it was awesome, and I'd recommend it for anyone to give it a crack and and have a try because it yeah it was really good leading up to it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so keeping it on boxing, do you have any favourite boxers at the moment? Oh, Zoo's Zoo up there. Uh, and obviously the fight the other night was outstanding. But, yeah, I, I love UFC, so I'm a UFC man. And, um, yeah, so old, old Victor, what a legend. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just that one-on-one -on -one, um, combat sport, boxing, UFC, wrestling, it's just um, they train so hard. For that sport, it's completely different. They're they're pretty much all alone by themselves, and they're even um, even their training partners. It gets competitive, so um, yeah, take me hat off to all of them. And just you know, it's great on a Sunday to sit there and, and watch watch the events of an afternoon or a Wednesday night, the Australian boxing, and obviously um, 
we've got um, Lussick and, and Gallon coming up. So there's a there's another fight to look forward to. Yeah, who do you got in that? Oh, I, I can't say Gal losing. Um, he's probably just got too much experience, to be honest. But uh, the big fellas come out and say he's going to knock him out. So uh, that just adds fuel to the fire and makes people want to watch it. So it's got me intrigued now, and I'll definitely be putting on pay per view for that. <laughs> Will you box again? Do you reckon, or oh, if I can guarantee to make uh, to raise that much money for charity again, I'd probably, I'd probably definitely highly think about it. But um, unless you know someone comes through and, and you know throws that kind of money uh, to charity, then then probably not. Um, yeah, it's I'm not out there to, to make money for myself like a lot of these other blokes. I, I'd rather um, yeah, put it towards a good cause, which, um, you know, I'm highly involved with at the moment and, and have been for many years. So I like trying to, to give back to those who, um, you know, have, don't have an opportunity themselves. So, yeah, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. So you said before that you liked um, UFC. You're obviously Australian and we're New Zealand. What round do you reckon um, Adesanya is going to knock out Whitaker in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. I, th- I think Whitaker might get him after Alessandro's last fight. He wasn't as convincing as he has been, so uh, it's gonna be an awesome matchup. And yeah, we'll see how it goes, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's um, just on Jack White, and obviously you're a um, one club man for the Canberra Raiders. Do you think Jack Whiten will stay? or Because I've seen a lot of rumours about him, obviously, um, maybe going to Dolphins or other clubs. Do you think he'll stay a one club? I was actually with Jacko on the weekend. So I was in, the, I was in his ear the, the, the whole weekend. We went went away for a fishing trip. So um, I hope he stays. Um, he's such a great talent. And I've seen him come through the ranks as, as a... As a kid, um, got to play alongside him. And, and now, you know, we get to, to watch him play and, and represent the... Uh, the, the mighty Raiders. So hopefully he does stay. Um, he's got so much talent and so much to offer and we just got to get him back to his best form, which he uh, had a couple of years ago. So I know he's in for a big year. He's told me on the weekend he's the fittest to, he's probably ever gone into pre-season. So that's always a, gr- a great sign. Um, and he, he's knuckling down to, to bring that form back when he took the Raiders to the grand final. So um, hopefully he does and um, I'll definitely be in his ear every time I see him. <laughs> Um, going to the Dolphins, if you were the, let's say, coach of the Dolphins, who would be your one person you would sign for them right now if you could? Uh, probably the man that you spoke about, Jack Whiten. Um, yeah, it would have to be, I reckon you'd have to target someone from Queensland. Um, you know, oh, yeah, t- tough one. Um, the one player I'd, I would get, and it's probably contradicting what I just said because I said I'd sign Jack, but you could play Jack anywhere, is uh, Cameron Munster. I reckon he could be a, um, a real leader of a club. I know it's, um, he's always in, in, the, in the headlines for sometimes the wrong reason, but I reckon he's you know up there, one of the best players to play the game. He's just uh, a freak. And at origin level, he, he always turns up and, and puts in the big games. And I reckon he could build a, build a club around someone like that. And he's, he's from Queensland, so that always helps as well. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the signing of um, Felice Cafusi, obviously there in 2023, so that should be pretty exciting. Definitely. Yeah, well, that's um, all the time we've got for today. We'd like to thank you so much for coming on. Eh? It's been it's been great. Is there anything else you want to say? Uh, awesome. Keep doing what you're doing, boys. Talking about rugby league, the best game of all. And um, Yeah, like I said earlier in the piece, go the mighty Raiders for 2022. Put your money on. <laughs> thank you very much. See ya. Sorry.